Welcome to my short presentation on Digo. I've attached a subtitle of Making the Internet a Nicer Place because now I know when I find information on the web, I know by using Digo that I can find it again and again if required. Digo provides an easy way for people to bookmark pages but also to share them with colleagues and friends and this makes it a nicer place. Well, for me anyway. There is a more in-depth set of resources on Digo available on my blog, which is enhancingteaching.com, or if you have any specific questions, give me a shout via Twitter at at Glenmark. Once you have an account set up, you can access your bookmarks from any device that allows you to access the internet. Log on to digo.com and enter your user details. From this screen, you'll see that since joining Digo, I have highlighted and bookmarked 1,178 different websites. The challenge now is to find a particular website that I've bookmarked in the past. And this is achieved by filtering the library of websites by typing in tags. Simply by typing in YouTube, for example, if I'm looking for a particular website and I know it's a YouTube video, just by typing YouTube into the filter box, I now have filtered my sites from 1178 down to 138. Still too many to shift through, but I can now add more filters by simply typing in a second tag and a third tag if required. So, if for example the website I know is a YouTube video that's on Moodle, if I type in the second tag for Moodle, I'm reduced down to 27. Um, web links to sift through and it's considerably easier remember my initial figure was 1178 tags so just by putting in two simple tags I was able to filter down my sites so what do I mean by tags a tag is any word or phrase that you choose that will remind you of the website Looking at this selection of sites that's here, there are four sites bookmarked over three separate days. The title of the site, automatically taken by Digo, is in blue, with the grey boxes beneath the titles being the tags. You can have as many or as little tags as you like associated with each site. You can also add and remove tags at any stage after you've bookmarked the site by clicking the edit text area, which is in grey. So how do we do this? We do this by using the Digo toolbar. And the one highlighted above is from Firefox, but there's similar ones in Chrome and Internet Explorer. These toolbars are traditionally located at the top of your browser screen. So to bookmark a site, you just click on bookmark and this option opens up for you. The URL and the fields are automatically populated by Digo. You then can mark the site as private if you do not want other people to access your bookmark, i.e. in the case of internet banking or an internal company intranet site. You can enter a short description of what the site is about if the title is not descriptive enough. Then the important bit, this is the tags. Use as many as you like and remember to use words that will help you remember the site. Digo provides you with tags that you used the last time and it will automatically give you some recommended tags but remember neither of which you're obliged to use. The other important aspect is that you can share links with a specific group of people, i.e. your students or colleagues. They will then get a mail with the basic information that you've provided on the website that you have bookmarked. For the remaining features of the toolbar, highlighter, capture and comment and send, I'll actually do live demonstrations. The next tab available for us on the Digo web toolbar is to highlight. So if we get a piece of text and we think this is particularly important and we can highlight it there. Now in this case it's turned up pink but you can actually click on the drop down arrow and make your next set of highlights being yellow if you wish and so on and you can colour code these according to your liking. Now the key with this is the next time you visit this site when you revisit it a day, a week, a month or a year later these sections will be highlighted for you and that to me makes it incredibly attractive for it means that you, you can read and digest all of the content of a particular website and then just come back to the important bits that you've highlighted at a later stage. If you decide after highlighting a particular piece of information that you want to extract that information 
uh, from the website. It's very, very easy to do. When you click on the send icon down here, extract annotations. And what it's done is anything that I've highlighted, this was the bits that I highlighted in pink, and indeed this was the bits that I highlighted in yellow, and copy it to my clipboard. And then you can paste it into any particular application. Now, the advantage with this, of course, you can have several pieces of text highlighted and they don't necessarily have to be sentences that are connected together. Yet the extraction tool, which is just to remind you, is located in the send toolbar under the extracted annotations. Um, <clears throat> that will capture it all for you and, and enable you to copy and paste it into the required space, whether it's in a Microsoft Word or PowerPoint document, it's 100% up to yourself. There are several circumstances where you may want to capture an image from a website, uh, taking copyright into consideration, of course. But if you click on Capture, which is the next option down on your toolbar, your screen goes grey and you have a cursor option enable you to drag and drop to a particular area. You have several options here, drawing straight lines, adding text, or indeed adding shapes. Very simply, I'm just going to save this image. Save it to your Digo account. You will get notification when it's in your Digo library. And let's just click on that link to check that it's there. So there's the URL for referencing. And there's the image that you've used. You can add in any comments that you like down in the bar and save the comments. So let's just go to our images library here just to see what it looks like. So there's a variety of images that I've collected from different websites and are used in different uh, presentations throughout the time and referenced them very simply by just giving my Digo account and images and referenced them very easily by just giving my Digo account and the URL that is up the top, which is digo.com forward slash user forward slash marklin and then type is image and Everything is above board there in terms of referencing. The next option on the toolbar is the next option on the toolbar is the comment function. Very simply, if you have a bookmark on a page, you can add your comments in. Add your comments in here. So you've added your comments in here. This is an excellent website and so on. Now, <clears throat> what happens here is these notes are added, these comments are added and maintained on the site. So if you're sharing a site with a group of friends or a group of colleagues, all of these notes can be uh, accessed if you decide to make them public or indeed you can delete them. Um, so where you have a site like this that's very text heavy, not only can you highlight the words as we described earlier on, but you can also insert a comment. And by inserting a comment, it will give the students or your colleagues additional information on the site. And it's as easy as that. And very simply, if you want to delete the comment, you just click on the delete tag that's there. So that's the fourth feature on the Digo bookmark um, toolbar, and it's the comment feature. Another excellent feature of Digo is available under digo.com forward slash tools. So when you click on Digo, just click on the tools site and this page is brought up. Pretty much most of what's on the page is self-explanatory, but the bit that I want to show you now is the saving favorite tweets. So when you click on this, it will ask you to add an account. I've previously added my own here. Glenn Mark is my Twitter name. And uh, now I'm going to edit preferences associated with this. And what happens is every time I click on favorites while I'm on Twitter, and it won't matter whether I'm on my iPad, my phone, or indeed my laptop, uh, when I click on favorites, it will add the site to my Digo library. That's assuming that, in, in my case, the preference that it contains a web link to it. Um, and it saves it by default under my public uh, folder. Now, it asks you to type in particular hashtags, I wanted to be able to find them at a later stage, so I used the hashtag tweet. So every time I come into my Digo site, if I wanted to find out at the end of the week or the end of the month what sites I favorited on Twitter, um, I would do a filter search for tweet, and it would come up with all of those. So it's an extra feature associated with Digo, which makes it, again, very, very user-friendly. 